we may all receive from you your blessing today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Can you all hear me? Yes. Yes. Good. Let's just pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We bless you. We give you glory, Lord, for this wonderful day. We thank you for all that you're doing in our lives, Lord. Lord. We pray, oh Father God, as I bring the word, it's not my word, Lord, but yours, that you've spoken through me and will continue to speak through me to empower us, Lord God, to do what is right for you, to please you, to do your will. I pray, oh God, that you will speak to each and every one of us here today, not just me, but each and every one of us here today, oh God, and that we will see the light. We in the dark, we need to see the light the way you want us to live our life. We give you glory, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 This morning, um, I remember when Peter sent the um, email in asking me, or asking us to see if we wanted to preach. And I wasn't so sure because I'm not really, <laughs> yeah, um, can I say, not something I really chose to come up here and, and preach, yeah. So it's a privilege, it's, it, it's absolutely wonderful to be standing here to give the word. But at the time when Peter asked me, I was really not so sure. It took me a while to respond. And then God spoke to me and he gave me the word and then I responded. So when Peter said to me, do you know what you're going to be preaching about? I think that was about two weeks ago. I said, yes, I do. I do already. I already know what to do because God has spoken to me. And he said, what is it? I said, the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. And that is what I've brought to you today. And that's what the Lord laid on my heart. Amen. So the foundation um, word for today is taken from Luke. I got a minute. No, sorry. It's, it's taken from Matthew <coughs> verses 33. Matthew 6 verses 33 and 34. So that is our foundation word I'm going to be talking about. So Matthew 6, 33 to 34 says here. Okay, it says here, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Amen? Amen. So, this is what the Lord is asking us, that we need to put our lives in order, our priority. I suppose it is a challenge to us because it's asking us to put what is right first. And there are competing demands of things that we want to take, that want to take our time away, you know, from what really is important. Okay, but what really we need to do is to please God first, yeah? So sometimes we are hungry, but we don't know what we are hungry for. But Jesus says in the Sermon on the Mount, which is Matthew 5, verse 6 says, Blessed are those who are hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. God designed our life to be simple. 1 Corinthians 3.10 says, this is what Paul, using um, the gift, he says, using the gift that God gave me, this is what Paul said, I did the work of an expert builder. Now, each of you must be careful how you build. So, I'm going to relate this to how we build our lives. Okay? So, if you can just imagine that you're building a, 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 
a building, but you are the, the building, your life. So let me ask you this question. What are you doing with your life? How are you building your life? Okay? So some people put emphasis on building their career, their home, you know, um, wanting to make money. But actually, you know, God wants you to be a kingdom builder. It is God's plan and purpose for your life. It means he wants you to please him. And he puts it simply this way. He wants us to have a balance in our life. And to have a balance, we need to prioritize. We need to organize and we need to be disciplined. Okay? This makes life simple. So really, what we need to do is to identify the correct and the right priorities in our life. It's very important. So Jesus has identified the right priorities for us. He only gave us two priorities. <laughs> Not many, just two. One, he says the kingdom of God. And that's what he said. He says, seek first the kingdom of God. And the second one, he said, the righteousness of God. And after that, Jesus said, you can then have all things and everything else will follow. Amen? Amen. 1 John 2, 29 says, all who practice righteousness are God's true children. So when you're doing and living in God's will and fulfilling the purpose you're made for in this kingdom of God has come in your life, it means when you're doing his will, when you're fulfilling his word, the kingdom of God has come into your life. I say, I want God's plan for my life, and I want God's plan for your life. Amen? God says in Matthew 6, 33, we're going back to it again, seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. Only the two things, and all other things will be given to you as well. So, let's make the foundation of our life number one. If you don't have a strong foundation, correct me if I'm wrong, how can you build anything on it? It needs to be solid. Solid as a rock. Okay? That's the foundation. The Bible says in Proverbs 24, 3, through godly wisdom, you need God's wisdom, a life, a home, and a family is built. And through understanding, it is established on a sound foundation. Amen. So everything is going to change. The only thing that's going to stay the same is God's word. Amen? Amen? So remember what matters most. In addition to God's word, remember what matters most. It's love. Because Jesus says, love your neighbor as yourself. And love God above all. That is the greatest commandment. We're not going to achieve much if we don't have love in our heart. Amen? Mm -hmm. So Galatians 5, 6, B, the only thing that counts is faith expressing it itself through love. So everything we do, have faith and express it through love. Okay? Love for your neighbor, love for your children, love God, love each other in this church. We love one another. I believe so. I feel love. I feel love when I come here because this is where I feel it's my second home. I've got friends, I've got people that I actually see more often than I see my family members. So this is my family as well. Amen? Amen. Amen. So 1 Corinthians 13, 1 to 3, Paul says, and if I had such great faith, I could move mountains, but without love, it would mean nothing. And even if I gave all my possessions to the poor and sacrificed my body without love, it would have no value. So that's the foundation as well. Amen? Amen. And the next thing, like I said, you must gather the right people to be around you, to help you, to sustain that foundation, to build you, helping you in prayer, helping you to just in you and feel love, helping you to understand you're not on your own. 
You're not going to build this house by yourself, all by yourself. But you have other people, helpers to help you build this house. Amen? 1 Corinthians 15, 33 says, don't be fooled. So choose the right people because bad company ruins good character. Hallelujah. Amen? So review the people that you have around you. If they're not um, adding value to your life, if they're not leading you towards Christ and enabling you to do what is right and pleasing to the Lord, you know, just <laughs> move to the other side, amen? Because God tells us that we can actually waste our lives if we're not be careful. We can actually spend our life in, with the wrong things, doing the wrong things to, and with the wrong people. So what we need to do is invest our life. And the greatest way to invest our life is to invest it in something that is going to outlast. Amen. And that is God. Amen. Amen. Something that is going to outlast it, outlast our life. So generationally, it's going to carry on through the, you know, you can lead someone to Christ, it's going to carry on. Amen. You're enabling the, the, the kingdom to develop. It's going to